And God is the strength of my heart. Oh, God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're gathered here today to witness a very important event being held for the first time in Christwood, the investiture of Christwood's school leaders. We are grateful to the Lord our God for the signature milestones that mark the growth of the school, this event and what it leads to being one of them. So let us begin this beautiful blessed day with the word of God that will be read to us by Miss Acham Abraham followed by a prayer by Ms. Shubha Samson. The word of God is taken from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 to 7. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseas, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not or as being, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Be clothed with humility, for God dresses the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our loving Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day, Master. Our God, our Master, from whom all authority flows. We honor you. We give you all glory. Lord Jesus, we commit the ceremony into your hands. We commit each one of these leaders who are taking up responsibility, trusting you to face the challenges, to make this responsibility relevant for them and, to re and relevant to all those whom they meet, Lord Jesus. Lord, give them the wisdom and guide them, Lord Jesus, as they move forward with all the responsibility, Lord. We know that you are the guiding force. You will be the source. And Lord Jesus, we also know that you will bring the excellence of Christian. You will bring the Christian excellence in them, Lord Jesus, so that they be a testimony. Christ would be a testimony and lift your banner high. All glory and honor to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all continue to worship and praise the Lord for his goodness and kindness as members of the school music team, Ms. Grace Shiba and Mr. Emmanuel Pratap Singh lead us in song.
Good morning, everybody. Let's continue to worship God. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. He soldiers of the cross. Lift high this royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be. Dear God, Heavenly Father, you are our greatest leader. You are our role model. Father, we pray for these new leaders who are taking up roles and responsibilities. Lord, we pray that they will follow you in everything that they do. We pray that you will hold their hands and help them and strengthen them. And may them be a blessing to our school and to this nation. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Christwood has been the blessed recipient of God's abundant grace and mercy since its very conception. From 110 students in its opening year, it is flourishing now with over 1,300 students in six years. The once nine and 10 year olds of the school are now old enough to take up leadership roles representing the student body. They have been nominated for their sincerity, integrity and hard work and it is our great pleasure to induct them into their new roles during this investiture ceremony. Before we begin the oath taking of the leaders, let us see who they are. Meet the newly nominated student leaders of Christwood for the academic year 2021 to 2022. The school leaders. Daveda Dashini of Grade 10 is school leader. Surya B of Grade 9 is school assistant leader. Matthew Anish Patul of Grade 10 is sports captain. Michael Joshua Paul of Grade 10 is Cultural Captain. The House Leaders Caitlin Brisha E of Grade 10 is Amethyst House Captain. Joyce Ruth Bell of Grade 9 is Amethyst House Vice Captain. Diana Maria Michael of Grade 10 is Jasper House Captain.
Maya Coven P of Grade 9 is Jasper House Vice Captain. Shivani P. Nadan of Grade 10 is Topaz House Captain. Dia Antoinette of Grade 9 is Topaz House Vice Captain. Irina Karis B of Grade 10 is Turquoise House Captain. Kevin Tony of Grade 9 is Turquoise House Vice Captain. These are the new student leaders of Christwood. Arigama, you need to unmute. I apologize. Our principal, Mrs. Annie Mohan, will now receive the oath from the newly nominated school leaders. It's my pleasure to receive the oath of the newly nominated school leaders for the academic year 2021-22. I request Daveda Darshini, school leader, to take the oath. I recognize you as the school leader of Christ Reach School. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God and to Christ Reach School? I, Daveda Darshini, school leader, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God and Christ with school. Thank you, Naveda. I request Surya B, school assistant leader, to take the oath. I recognize you as the school assistant leader at Christ Church. Do you promise to do your best to do your duty to God and to the Christ Church school? I, Surya B, school assistant leader, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity. To uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God and Christ who is good. Thank you, Surya. I request Matthew Anish Patur, sports captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the sports captain of the Christwood School. Do you promise to do your best to do your duty to God? and to the Christwood School? I, Matthew Anish Kutur, sports captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God and Christwood School in the field of sports. Thank you, Matthew. I request Michael Joshua Paul, cultural captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the cultural captain of the Christwood School. Do you promise to do your best to do your duty to God and to the Christwood School? I, Michael Joshua, cultural captain, Humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity to uphold the values of Christian excellence 
in all I say and in all I do for the glory of God and Christwood School in cultural activities. Thank you, Michael. I request Caitlin Brisha E. Amethyst House Captain to take the oath. I recognize you as the House Captain of the Amethyst House of Christwood School. Do you promise to do your best to do your duty to God, to Christwood School, and to your house? I, Caitlin Brisha E., humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all they say and in all I do for the glory of God, Christwood School, and Amethyst House. Thank you, Caitlin. I request Joyce Ruth Bell, Amethyst House Vice Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the wise captain of the Amethyst House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School and to your house? I, Joyce Rutha, Amethyst House wise captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God, my school and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love integrity and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God, Christwood School and Amethyst House. Thank you, Joyce. I request Diana Maria Michael, Jasper House Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the captain of the Jasper House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School and to your house. I, Diana Maria Michael, Jasper House Captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God, Christwood School, and Jasper House. Thank you, Diana. I request Maya Coven P, Jasper House Vice Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the Vice Captain of the Jasper House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School, and to your house? I, Maya Coven P, Jasper House Vice Captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do for the glory of God, Christwood School, and Jasper House. Thank you, Maya Kevin. I request Shivani P. Nadan, Topaz House Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the captain of the Topaz House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School, and to your house? I, Shivani P. Nathan, Topaz House Captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God, Christwood School, and Topaz House. Thank you, Shivani. I request Dia Antoinette, Topaz House Vice Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the Vice Captain of the Topaz House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School, and to your house? I, Dia Antoinette, Topaz House Vice Captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God, 
Christwood School and Topaz House. Thank you, Dia. I request Irina Karis B, Turquoise House Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the captain of the Turquoise House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School, and to your house? I, B. Irina Karis, Turquoise House Captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best, to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the value of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, for the glory of God, Christ's school, and Turquoise House. Thank you, Irina. I request Kevin Tony, Turquoise House Vice Captain, to take the oath. I recognize you as the Vice Captain of the Turquoise House. Do you promise to do your best, to do your duty to God, to Christwood School, and to your house? I, Kevin Tony, Turquoise House Vice Captain, humbly acknowledge the honor bestowed upon me. I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, my school, and my teachers, to serve my fellow students with love, integrity, and dignity, to uphold the values of Christian excellence in all I say and in all I do, to the glory of God, Christ at school, and turquoise house. Thank you, Kevin. I request the school to stand up at attention for the school anthem. Please stand. with us, Mr. Corey Stixrud, as a chief guest, our chief guest this morning. He is the principal of Kodeknal International School. I will admit to siphoning the following instructions off the KIS webpage. Mr. Stixrud is an energetic leader and community-minded individual with over 18 years of professional experience in education. He serves as principal of KIS where he attended as a student from 1977 through his graduation in 1986. He returned to KIS in 2012 as vice principal and he took up the role of principal in 2013. Mr. Stixrad has been in the field of shaping young minds and inspiring them to be lifelong learners for almost two decades. His wealth of experience in education includes being a classroom teacher, curriculum planner, literacy consultant, writing mentor, and youth program coordinator. I welcome Mr. Stixrad to now address our school leaders. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for that wonderful, what wonderful introduction, uh, Ms. Lazarus. Um, it's just delightful to be here. Um, I'm looking at, I, I've been watching this ceremony and uh, I have to say, students, that there is an incredible amount of uh, pride invested in you, and I can see it in your teachers' smiles and their looks of pride when when your name when you come up on the screen. 
uh, and there's just been something very deeply uh, touching about your oaths and this entire ceremony. Um, so it is, it is an honor for me to be here with you today in this virtual space with Christwood School. Um, so I understand that you are in grade 10 and, and, and you hold the place of privilege uh, as the first grade 10 students at Christwood School uh, and that this program is an investiture, which is by definition a ceremony of bestowing rank uh, upon you. I am delighted to take part in this historic occasion at, at Christwood School. So the topic today is, is clearly leadership. Um, and what an interesting idea to think about. Uh, you know, what is a leader? Are some people born uh, to lead and others to follow? Uh, are there specific traits that leaders possess? Uh, you know, um, there are, I, I don't believe that there are definitive and final answers to these questions, but I will share my perspective um, with you, which is of course, largely a result of my own life experience. Uh, as, as Ms. Lazarus said, I am the principal of Cota Canal International School. Um, and as also mentioned, I was a student here uh, many years ago. Uh, since the topic is uh, today is leadership, you might ask, was I a leader when I was in grade 10, when I was a student uh, at KIS? And I think the answer is in some ways, yes. Uh, and in other ways, not so much. Um, I was a leader on the sports field, uh, a captain of just about every sports team that I could get on. Um, I had the very good fortune to uh, make the Tamil Nadu State basketball team uh, when I was just, when I turned 18. Um, and I was probably a leader in individual subjects that I really liked or was very good at, like English and economics. Uh, but I was not someone, I was not a student who necessarily liked to join groups beyond my comfort zone. Uh, and I think I was at certain times, you might've heard this expression, too cool for school. Uh, and, and so I think that in that sense, I didn't like to speak out um, in front of others in a formal setting. And I didn't necessarily want to apply myself uh, or challenge myself in areas in which I didn't have full confidence in my abilities. So I, I have a few general lessons about that, a few general thoughts, I guess, about leadership that I'll share. And then I'll tell you a, a story from, from history. So the first, the first lesson I can, I can, I'd really like to share is to be yourself. If there is one defining characteristic of effective leadership, it has to be authenticity, to be authentic, to be true. Uh, everyone, of course, in different ways can be a leader, but the qualities that make each one of us a leader uh, has to come from the wellspring of our true identity. It has to emerge organically from who we are as people. We have to know ourselves and we have to be ourselves. Uh, for instance, I am at heart uh, someone who cares deeply about how others think uh, and how they might react to a decision that I make as a leader. Uh, if I don't acknowledge that aspect of myself, if I stop collaborating with others or stop listening to others, uh, I am not being myself. Uh, so I have to do all of that. I have to also believe uh, in what I'm leading and what I'm saying and how I'm going about it. Um, the second lesson is that leadership is not um, an end to itself. Uh, leadership is the result of your efforts. Uh, you cannot pursue leadership uh, just as I believe it's unwise to pursue success or to pursue money. Um, you can't just say, I'm a leader uh, and then start bossing people around, right? Um, rather, leadership ensues. It ensues from your thoughts and your attitudes and your actions, uh, from your discipline and your devotion to something greater than yourself. Uh, in the oaths that, that the leaders today took, uh, you talk about that. You say uh, love, integrity, uh, dignity, um, and uh, Christian excellence. Uh, so those are all things that you are, are you, you, you are taking an oath to stand up for those things. Um, and, and so that's where leadership comes from that. You can't just say, oh, there's a great leader. Um, there's uh, my principal, Ms. Mohan, uh, Mrs. Mohan. You can't just say, there's a great leader. I will do exactly what they do uh, and I will be a leader too. 
Instead, you have to identify an area of interest or concern, choose a career that speaks to your heart, to your values, uh, to Christian excellence. And eventually, if you stick to it, leadership will certainly ensue. Uh, the third idea I wanna share with you related to the previous one is that in order to be a great leader, you first need, uh, you, you, you first need to adopt a servant mentality. As in, how can you be of service to others? You need to be a great follower before you can be uh, a great leader. Um, and I, in the in the opening, uh, I believe in the opening hymn, in the opening, sorry, in the opening Bible reading in First Peter chapter five, it says that that we should submit, uh, that we need to be followers first, and that's exactly my uh, message as well. Is that you need to learn to be vulnerable. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when I was in high school, I didn't always like to try new things or extend myself uh, in areas where I felt vulnerable. I would have been far more successful or maybe successful earlier uh, if I was willing to try new things. You first need to put yourself out there uh, in new situations before you can think of becoming a leader. Uh, also, to be an impactful leader. Uh, it is helpful to understand how others feel, um, something we call empathy, so that you are able to understand when you have had similar experiences. And you can only have those experiences if you yourself at some point are vulnerable. Um, there are, those are just some basic and general ideas uh, that occurred to me about leadership. Uh, but I also wanna tell a quick story. Uh, it's a, a story that I heard about leadership, um, I think early on. Uh, and this is a story from history. Uh, actually, actually, it's a story more from literature than history. It's about an English king named Henry V. Um, and the real Henry V, I have to add this for any historians in the audience, the real Henry V was, was a bit of a shady uh, and reckless character. But William Shakespeare wrote a play called Henry V. And uh, Shakespeare's Henry V offers a, a wonderful, a great study of leadership. Uh, the play is well known for many quotes. You may have heard uh, Sherlock Holmes say, the game is afoot. That comes from Henry V. Um, and I'm not going to tell you the whole story, obviously, just a quick synopsis uh, of the play and the time we have. The, the, um, the young he King Henry is insulted by the French king. And as a result, he decides to invade France. Um, and many battles ensue, but finally the British and English armies prepare for what will likely be the final battle, um, you know, out on a, on a field outside the French town of Agincourt. Um, what you have to realize at this point is that the English were heavily outnumbered. Five to one, they were outnumbered. They were far from home and the French generals were were confident of their success and things looked very bleak for the British. Uh, but there's this wonderful scene where the night before the battle, King Henry disguises himself as a common soldier and he walks around and he's just talking to everyone and no one realizes that he's the king. Um, and you know, so what he finds is that most of the soldiers believe that they will die the next day, uh, that they, they basically accepted their fate. Um, and he goes and he sits by the campfire um, and these three, three soldiers come up and sit at the campfire. Uh, and Henry starts up a conversation with them. And they, in the play, they start to criticize Henry, the king, not knowing that they're talking to him. And they start to question everything. They question his motivations. They question his courage. Uh, and they're just very freely speaking uh, in, in very harsh terms about their king. Uh, and Henry, of course, defends the king himself, uh, but these three don't back down from their criticism so that they finally agree that should they survive the battle the next day, uh, that they will fight each other. They will, they will have a battle of honor. Um, and I, they exchange gloves, which I guess was the established custom for signaling that they will fight later on. So the three go off into the night and Henry is left alone. Uh, and in the hymn that we sang earlier, uh, don't be afraid to stand alone. Uh, you know, I think that 
He is sad, lonely, isolated. As a leader, uh, he's not able to relax. He basically says the only good thing uh, about being a leader is the great clothes that you get to wear, which is a really funny thing to say uh, for the king. But this is true about leadership. Um, everyone's worries at times. Uh, I'm thinking of all the house leaders there today, and you'll have many different people from your house. All of their worries, their concerns, uh, are laid upon your shoulders at times. Um, so being a leader is rarely an easy thing to be. But at dawn, the morning of the battle, uh, Henry prays to God. He asks for strength. He asks for forgiveness for his sins. Um, and then the next scene cuts over to the French cap, camp where there are the generals, uh, the French noblemen are all kind of laughing and, and they're, they're laughing at the pathetically small band of English soldiers. They're absolutely confident that they will crush the English in battle. Uh, then back to the English camp, and Henry gives uh, one of the most famous speeches in, in literature, in Shakespeare, and it's known as the St. Crispin's Day speech because the day of the battle happens to be October 25th, which is the day of St. Crispin. Uh, and one of the English noblemen is very uh, upset. He's upset that so many of the English uh, noblemen and and soldiers had stayed home. They'd stayed in England. They hadn't joined. But Henry, the king, steps up and he disagrees. And he says he's happy that they are few because each one of those present can earn a greater, shore, a greater share of honor. Right? And he addresses the soldiers and he does something remarkable. He says that anyone who wants can leave. Even though they're already such a small number, he says anyone who wants to can go home. Uh, and he'll, he will even give them money to travel back to England if they, if they would like to leave uh, and leave the battle and not take part. Um, but then he adds that everyone who stays to fight will have a reason to be proud. That every St. Crispin's Day until the end of their life, uh, they will remember that they fought in the battle uh, and they live to tell about it. Uh, you know, in Shakespeare's words, he says... Um, he that he that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast of his neighbors he will strip his sleeve and show his scars and say these wounds I had on Crispin's day he says that every soldier who decides to fight and stand by the king will become his brother and those that stayed home will regret not having taken part so the soldiers and the noblemen their morale is boosted in this in this day Everyone cheers, the French come by once more and uh, say, I will give you one last opportunity to surrender. And the British say, no, we're not gonna surrender. And the battle begins. So, so what happens? Well, of course the British bolstered by, their, by the, the words of their brave king win the battle. Um, in, the, in the history books, if you read about the Battle of Agincourt, um, it's remarkable because I think that there were there were 10,000 of the French soldiers uh, vanquished in the battle and only 29 of the English soldiers. So it's a remarkable, remarkable war. But there was a there was a genius to Henry V's leadership. He turned a disadvantage, the small number of troops, the helplessness, uh, the hopelessness really to his advantage. And he gave his troops a cause, a purpose a call to honor, justice, glory, um, all of those things so that it, for the men, he turned a dubious role into almost something like a privilege. And one, one other interesting uh, ending to this tale is the fate of the three men. Remember, the three men at the campfire that the king had met. Um, in, in the original play, it's a bit confusing, but the short thing is that eventually uh, Henry meets these three men. Um, and they find out that he's the king and that they were the, that he was the man that they met at the campfire. Uh, and of course, they're quaking in their boots. They're, they're afraid that now the king will, uh, the full extent of the king's ire will now descend upon them. Um, and a fa in fact, a nobleman who's there witnessing the scene says, uh, you know, they should be put to death for their harsh words to the king. But what does Henry do? And this is a beautiful Part of the part of the story for me. Um, he has the glove filled with gold coins, right? And he gives it, he has it given to the men. 
Um, and the, the lesson there for me is, is a, a very deep one. And it's that the good leaders never punish those who speak truth to them. In fact, those who speak truth are rewarded. So all of you young leaders today, um, realize that um, when, when someone, maybe someone in your house, someone in the school comes and shares something with you and using your discernment, you know that they are speaking truth. Uh, don't punish them, but reward them for, uh, for their honesty and for speaking truth. So uh, the, those are just a few of the lessons I wanted to pass on to you today about leadership. I hope that, uh, I hope that you learned something and I, and I found this useful in some way. Um, I, I want to thank uh, especially Dr. Alfred Deva Prasad for inviting me to speak today uh, and everyone who was involved in this wonderful, wonderful um, investiture this morning. I wish all of you the best. Um, young students, I will keep you in my prayers uh, and, and I will be thinking of you in the days to come. I wish you good luck and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stixrod, for that very inspiring message and the story from Shakespeare that went along with it. And now Daveda Darshini, the school leader, will respond to the entire ceremony and the message. A good morning to our chief guest, Mr. Corey Stixrod, our CEO, Dr. Alfred Deva Prasad, our principal, Mrs. Annie Mohan, beloved teachers, and my dearest schoolmates. I, the Veda Dashni, am highly honored and grateful to God to have given me this opportunity to lead, even though the hard times we are now makes it difficult for us to follow a regular school routine and system. Although I must say, and I'm sure my friends will agree, that with Christwood's virtual school, we have it almost as good as the school on campus. I could not be more thankful to the school for recognizing a leader in me. I take this time to congratulate my fellow leaders who along with me have taken their oaths. We must take this chance to be the epitome of good school leaders. We have committed ourselves to taking up the responsibilities bestowed on us and fulfilling our duties. Therefore, we must work together to embrace our vulnerabilities, admit to mistakes made, reflect role model-like behavior, uphold the vision of our school, and lead with integrity. I would like to highlight certain keynotes from Mr. Koi Stixrat's message to us. The first message he gave us was that we should believe in ourselves. Another important point to remember is that leadership comes from our thoughts, actions, and discipline. We should also adopt a servant mentality. We need to be great followers before we can be great leaders. Good leaders are never punished when they speak the truth, but rewarded. On behalf of my fellow school leaders and the school student body, I'd like to thank you for the message you've given us, sir. Before I take my leave, I want to express my gratitude to the school again, because without every person present here, I would not be standing here today. Thank you. Well, at the very last few minutes of this beautiful ceremony, it's my pleasure to offer the vote of thanks to our dear chief guest, Mr. Corey Spitzrad, principal of the Pude International School, and to all others present here. Along with the little leaders here, this is a dream come true day for me. The thought that our first batch of grade 10 will miss the leadership roles because we, were, we are still online. And a ceremony like this was a burden on my heart. But God in his perfect time has worked out everything beautifully. So his grace has enabled us to see them pronounce their oaths. My heart rejoices and I give all the glory and honor to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was indeed a privilege to have Mr. Corey Stixrad, principal for his 
uh, with us. Thank you, sir, so much for that inspiring message and making it very, very special for our children. And I did enjoy that flashback story of William Shakespeare. Thank you so much, sir. I have a word of appreciation to, for the parents of our student council leaders for joining us. I can surely say that your hearts will be swelling with pride and joy. I'm proud to be part of a dynamic and vibrant staff team who worked with passion and complete dedication to see this day come alive. Thank you, dear staff members, for your brilliance and your involvement. I would also like to thank a well done to our admin team and a big thank you to our technical team. And to my smart and lovely student leaders, the weather and her team, dare to be a Daniel. Enjoy your moment. Remember, the challenge of leadership is to be strong, but not stubborn, bold, but not overbearing, confident, but not proud. Humble, but confident. And have plenty of humor without folly. And to all the students of grade six to 10, I thank you for joining. And as you witness this, tell it to yourself that there is a leader in you, but as our respected chief guest said, be informed that leadership is a result of dedicated hard work. And finally, my heartfelt appreciation to our beloved and respected CEO, Dr. Alfred Devaprasad, for his encouragement and support at all times. Himself, a school pupil leader, is surely an inspiration and a role model, not just for our students, but for me and my team of teachers. Thank you so much, sir. Once again, I thank you all who witnessed the ceremony. Thank you, sir, once again for your presence with us, Principal Corey, and to all of you, have a great weekend and God bless. Thank you, ma'am. As the ceremony comes to a close, I request everyone to rise to their feet. Dr. Anna Saromni will lead us in prayer, after which we will sing the school prayer song, followed by the national anthem. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for your guidance, protection, and love at every part of our lives. We thank you for our parents and family members who have brought us this far. We thank you for all those who have taken so much effort to make this day possible, even in online school. Holy Spirit, we ask you to enable us to grow in love, integrity, and discipline. Enable us to be your faithful followers and obedient disciples, and fill us with your word. Grant us understanding and empathy which can only come from you. We pray that your touch in our lives will turn our disadvantages and difficulties into blessings and victories. We pray for your blessing on each one of the student leaders, each one of the student community, the teachers, our principal, our CEO, and our special speaker today. We ask you to bless our work and bring it to fruition.
we pray that you will enable us to take today's lessons to heart and listen to the truth and work with humility, with a servant mentality, and do our best to be excellent in everything that we say and do in our studies, our work, our play, our sports, our music, drama and singing, and in all other aspects of school life and home life. We pray all these prayers with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. All glory to God, he has lifted me up, he has lifted me up by now. He reached out his hands and he lifted me up, and that's why I love him so. I love him more and more, I love him more and more, and when I stand upon the other shore, I'll praise him more and more, and when I stand upon the other shore, I'll praise him more and Let us stand at attention for the national anthem. School standard ease. Attention. Anthem. Congratulations once again to our new leaders. Go forth into the rest of this year with the heart to love and serve in humility and truth. May God be with you. I thank everyone who is here with us and pray you have a beautiful weekend.